Hello everyone, welcome to the third tutorial to a beginner's guide on how to Enscape. Today, we will do a quick overview of the new Enscape option within Revit as well as the interface Enscape has. I've already made a window split for both Revit and Enscape for ease of use for everyone. Let's start with Revit. We've stated that in the last couple of videos, Enscape updates immediately for any changes within Revit. To avoid that, I'm going to show you something first. Let's start with any random item or element here. Let's go with this window over here. If I were to delete here within Revit, you will notice that this one disappears as well. To avoid that, simply just click this post live update here. Now, if I were to delete this, you will notice that no changes are being done in Enscape. Now, if I were to click play here or resume live, there, you'll notice the difference. Now, let's go ahead and click undo for everything before we proceed. All right. Next is the view selection dropdown, which is here. Now, this allows you to switch perspective views that are already listed or what we have in our project browser of Revit. As you see here, we've got here listed out the same here in 3D view within project browser. Now, if I were to click kitchen, you will notice in Enscape, it immediately switches the view to a kitchen. Let's try the living room. Let's try something else. See how everything is being done for us automatically and within real time with just a click of a button. Now, up next is the asset library. which is this one. No, let's start with this one first. Render image is like a screenshot taken within Enscape that, di that then imports a rendered version of it within Revit project browser under renderings. Let's give it a try. Now, check what's going on within Enscape itself. Now that is done, here, go back to your project browser Go to renderings, which this one, I guess. I think there's a lot already here, but I'm assuming it's this one since it's got the same time and date I have here within my time zone. So if I double click this, and this is what we got. See the difference between this and the one in Enscape. Unfortunately, this is just a screenshot. So of course, if you were to zoom in, everything will be pixelized and blurred out. So let's go ahead and delete this. Next, let's try the asset library. All right, now while it's loading, this is one of the options that you will be using plenty in Revit since it allows you to place a low detail model within Revit, but once updated into Enscape, it immediately converts into a high quality asset. This is done so that Revit doesn't suffer from any performance issue. Sorry, performance issue. Let's give it a try. Let's close this again first. We gotta put it somewhere here. What if I change this to really consistent color and fine. There. Again, here, go to asset library. Let's use something for an outdoor usage. Let's try a vehicle. Alright, let's do just use something small like a bicycle. There it is. Now I guess once I click anything, it automatically drops down. So let's give something big a try, like, I think this is a dodge. Let's try this one. See how it loads once I click the asset and it's there. Here's the low poly or the low detail model. Now if I were to left click on it and press escape, the library immediately comes back again. So let's close this and look at here. Now, this is the high quality rendered compared to the one in Revit. So as you see, my Revit is still fast, even if I were to view it like this and look at what looks like here in Enscape. Fascinating, isn't it? All right, so 
let's delete this now see how it automatically update within Enscape since I have this live update on resume next let's do the manage upload which is this one right here so simply put it's just like a cloud but for Enscape next is the sound source which is here which give, gives us a lot of option to use next is the general settings right here I don't think that you'll be really needing to change anything here but looking at it is work try so here in Revit we've got the material selection and appearance and graphics I like mine in appearance so that I won't do any mistake in the future now preference I don't think there's anything that you will be changing here not unless you want to suppress the graphic driver warning so I just if I were if I were you just take this off next we've got the network and lastly the rendering here if you really if you really want to change anything I just suggest that untick both of this option on so that it won't be um, graphic heavy for your computer especially if you're using a laptop so I just click my tick on now I guess that's it for the user interface within Revit let's try the one within Enscape next all right so of course we've got the home button right here next is the collaborative annotation that we got here you already see the hotkey or the shortcut key being seen as well like the escape and the letter C so let's go ahead and use that so here in collaborative annotation it allows you to input comments or issues for your team to rectify here in the detail tab so, uh, so if I were to create an issue right here all right so here let's give something else a try let's say rectify this issue and just put a description you want and just simply do a create and we just work done right here so we've got the issue here so upon clicking you will notice that it has a picture ready for us since we've got it right here next we've got a comment here is a comment section for group topics and discussion it's very easy to use next up is the beam information right here which is the layer B now the beam information simply gives us a detailed parameter of our link beam so let's um, let's try this one here as you see it's the casework that we have right here for the kitchen it automatically highlights everything for us but of course here we cannot edit nor delete because this is simply just an information for us as a reference next is the view management right here now this is a function that allows us to create and save a preview within Enscape which is the button right here also it already has the 3d view that Revit has back then in the project browser which is already imported here in Revit for in sorry in Enscape for us as well next we've got the asset library we've already tackled this back in Revit it simply does the same option and next we've got the site context it's kind of like the urban version so let's just give it a try and give it an import site context really just allows us to load a real-time low poly surroundings from the map and there it is in the background now let's remove that since we don't need it for now okay next up we've got the video editor right here so of course simply put it just allows us to edit some video more on this on our first in our future tutorials next we've got the media output selection right here we've got the screenshot of course we've already tackled this back within Revit interface it's just a rendered screenshot we've got a batch render it's grayed out right now but if I were to click X on this it allows us to do a batch rendering screenshot of all the 3D view that we have. We even have a panorama, either mono or stereo. So this is really a good try for us. In a future tutorial, I will be doing this as well. Same for the standalone, which is one of the unique, very good option that Enscape has. More on this in future videos. Oh, and I almost forgot, we've got here a safe frame.
Now, what this does is, it's just a good practice to have it toggled on whenever you're making a video, so that as you see here in the edges, you have a guide or rather a reference of your video frame limit, so you won't be making a mistake on knowing where the limit will be. Also, we've got a cute minimap here in the upper left corner for us to use. For me, that's very useful since I'm very used to having my own minimap as well. And lastly, we've got the visual settings right here. Now, what this does for us is, like it says, it's a visual setting. So, we can change the style here. Let's give it a try. Like, I want to put it white, for example. Now, I've got my black and white outline. Now, if I were to put this in maximum, it kind of looks like a draft pay-per-view, doesn't it? Next, we've got a camera here for the two-point and orthographic. I just like to put mine in perspective. We've got the exposure or the brightness here. You even have the option of making an auto brightness on your own. Let's put this back to none and decrease the outline like this. We've got the field of view. I like mine on 60 to 80. Let's make it 75. We've got the depth of field, which makes it a little bit cooler if done in animation. We've got the rendering quality. If your computer can handle it, just type putting it on graph and just Play around, with it, play around with it once you're going to start your animation or video editing. I like to put mine on high just in case. Here, we've got the image screenshot output. We've got the atmosphere for it to play around with. Even the height. Everything else is here for you to play around, whichever is comfortable for you. We've got the sky. There. Usually, I like mine at the desert because it looks a bit cold, but it doesn't match with our landscape, so better to put it either skybox or clear. I just like to put mine in skybox as well so that I have no extra option here to play around with. And lastly, we've got the output. Now here, let's say for example, if you want to do a short video for your YouTube, just make it into custom and make it 1500 to 1000, for example. But since it's better to make it in HD, or full HD or maybe even Ultra HD if you want it 4K. So for now on, I will make it Ultra HD, which is better for the viewers. And we've got here, depth of range for you to play around with. The file type, whichever you want, PH, PNG is always the best universal for us to use. And I guess that's it. For questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And if you find this tutorial helpful or even interesting at all, you can help me by liking and subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much, guys.